Hi, welcome to my demonstration of my new OS. I'm Brett Gordon, uh, uh, known as Beretta42 in the chat room, um, or just Beretta. Uh, what you're just looking at here is my terminal. Uh, this is an operating system for the Coco 3. Uh, and it's important to note that this uh, uh, presentation is all done real time on a Coco 3, so I'm going to tell that into my Coco, which is hooked into my computer via drive wire. That means I can tell that to it. And the first thing my operating system tells me is I logged in on port number two, virtual serial port number two. And I'm going to run the demo. And I don't have a name for the sauce, so if you ever come up with a cool name, let me know. Uh, but right now, it's just going to be called OS. One, it's designed for a Coco 3. It won't work on a Coco 1, a 2, uh, or a Dragon 32 or 64. It's, it needs an MMU. It's just written in assembly language via LWASM, Lost Wizards uh, Assembler. Thanks, Bill, for writing a nice uh, assembler. Uh, has good, efficient library support. Now, it doesn't include files unless you need them, which is really pretty cool. Similar to my old assembler, and I think uh, Bill actually did a nice job of making sure it was comfortable transition uh, for my old assembler. Uh, has a nice linker in it. Thanks, Bill. It is standalone. Uh, it does not require BASIC, just extended color BASIC, OS 9, or anything else to run. Uh, however, it does bootstrap via a DOS formatted disk. Uh, you can boot it with, uh, if I give you an image or you end up obtaining an image from somebody, you can boot it using the DOS DOS command, or you can auto boot it uh, via HDB DOS will auto boot it for you. Uh, basically, I turn on the computer and it goes right to it. Uh, careful, these disks are not fully RS DOS format. You can't add programs to it or delete programs. It's very, very simple. It's designed to be read only. Uh, programs are written in assembly in my operating system. Uh, You'll see me use fourth in my next uh, part, but uh, fourth is not necessary. You can just use assembly. The whole operating system is written in assembly. Uh, it is a microkernel. It is preemptive, uh, sort of preemptive. Uh, it is preemptive, meaning there is a 60 hertz timing interrupt that will interrupt a task, and the scheduler will, will be automatically invoked to uh, schedule another task if needed or if there is another task. Uh, tasks don't have priorities, so when you say preemptive, sometimes that means different things to people, but it is sort of preemptive. It does not require cooperation. It does channel based inter process communication. It does the standard uh, virtualizes CPU and address space for each task. Uh, memory allocation is in 8K blocks. Uh, the microkernel will not allocate smaller or larger or anything like that. It just, you ask it for a block, it gives you one. It handles threading and exacting. There are a few extras in the kernel, not much. Basically, my kernel is designed to work with tasks and with channels. And the ancillaries are very limited uh, due to space concerns. There are no file systems, locks, timers, mutexes, semaphores, zibber zabbers, monitors, devices, block devices, character devices, nothing like that. The kernel doesn't understand any of that. The kernel understands channels and tasks. As far as channels go, channels are half duplex, uh, which means that information flows from one end to the other. It's not full duplex like files are. Uh, channels are the only officially supported IPC mechanism in the kernel. Um, so if you do all your uh, communications over channels, it'll be, you'll be best served. Uh, channels have a 16-bit uh, FIFO buffer in them, and they operate asynchronously uh, for putting values on and off until the FIFO fills up, and then it'll resort to synchronous uh, uh, data passing. Uh, Beside the channel, you also have remote procedure calls, uh, which is basically a message reply uh, messaging based system where you can use channels to send message and receive replies from other tasks. 
channels are also used to handle character devices as uh, the FIFOs work very well with character-based devices. Uh, block devices can be emulated using the message and reply semantics. In fact, that would pretty much work really well for that. Um, when you use channels, um, anytime you use channels and they're, not, and they're not ready to be used, either another task is accessing the channel or reading or writing or something like that, or there's no more room left on the buffer, it will put your task to sleep uh, where it does not consume CPU cycles in any way other than to count its timer, which only happens every tick or every, yeah, every tick. Uh, channels are standalone. They don't need, unlike uh, Unix and OS 9, uh, you don't need a task to handle channels. Channels can exist on their own. Um, tasks will be using channels, but they don't have to be self-contained. You know, in other words, uh, channels exist outside of tasks. Regarding threading, a threading model is designed to be lightweight and threading creates shallow copies of task ob you know of task objects. Uh, basically, tasks share everything with their parent uh, except the stack. Uh, and warning, threads share everything, which means if you make and use threads, uh, you want to do your own IPC, you're more than welcome, but you will have to do your own IPC. You'll have to make your own mutexes, locks, spin locks, and the other such things to do what you're doing. Uh, when you exact, when you issue an exact uh, kernel call, it, the threads will then become standalone. They'll receive their own copies of all the data, and uh, will load up a binary, binary image off file system and execute. Uh, having very weak threads or weak references or whatever you want to call these things, uh, the threads are fast to make, use, and destroy. Uh, there's not a big hit on there's not a whole lot of data duplication being done when you make a thread or delete a thread. It's not really, uh, it's a very small ta you know, task structure that gets copied. You don't ta copy all the tasks data over. How is this different than OS 9? Uh, it's a top half kernel. Uh, the kernel always sits in user space memory. Uh, it sits in the last 8K. Many system calls are preemptible and don't turn off interrupts until the very last minute and you can actually preempt the kernel if you're in kernel mode. System calls are not like OS 9 where you use a SWI2 followed by a post byte to call. They're simply a JSR to an indirect table. Makes them faster. No pick code needed. User space programs always start at uh, address 0 and pick code costs cycles to a lot of that accessing costs cycles to uh, do position independent coding. They're inherently modular. That's no biggie. Uh, modular, most uh, kernels are modular. Linux, OS 9. Uh, my kernel's not modular. However, because most of everything the kernel usually does is going to be in user space, those are modular. So, no sweat. And of course, it helps them virtualize bigger memory into smaller memory. I'm not going to make any guarantees that this is any faster or slower than OS 9. I tried to make it faster, but that doesn't mean I'm going to win any wars. Uh, microkernels are inherently slow. There are some design limits with this. First of all, the task space is 56k. Uh, your task has to leave the last 8k alone because that's where the kernel sits. Kernel space, of course, is 8k. Uh, even with this 8k, I'm able to squeeze about 100 tasks or channels into this into the dynamic memory, uh, which should allow for some pretty serious work being done on the Coco. It supports 5K RAM as it is, um, although it wouldn't be hard to make it support 128, and I don't think 1 meg or 2 megs would be that difficult either, but as of right now, um, I'm only working with it with 512K RAM, unless other people get interested. Okay, well, that is the end of part one. Part two, uh, I will show you um, some actual interactivity using our fourth shell for the operating system, and I will... See you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.